have a problem. Hey, what's up, everyone? Hello, and welcome to a brand new episode of Heliopsychosis Podcast. This is your host, Vikas Aziv. Guys, welcome to the show. If you're watching us from YouTube, do comment, like, share, and subscribe if you haven't. And do invite your friend to help us grow this community and get the message and the content we are creating here to get much more far. And you can also join us on Truth in Plain Sight on Facebook. The same thing, you could also become a member there too or subscribe. And if you're watching us from Flat Earth Research Network Group or Heliopsychosis Group, welcome everyone there too. Do tag your friends. And yes, uh, if you're commenting from Facebook, we cannot see your name. So you have to allow StreamYard when you comment that we could see your name so we know who is commenting from there. And yes, welcome there, everyone, too. And finally, if you're watching us from realtruthseekers.com, rts.video, welcome, everyone, there, too. We have a huge community. Yes, realtruthseekers.com or rts.video is one of our main sponsors for this show, Heliopsychosis, and most of our productions, coming productions. As I mentioned, too, it's uh, unchannel banned, uncensored platform, better than YouTube to find some great content as a, as a viewer or as a content creator. Some amazing features they are adding, too, as I mentioned before, too, about referrals and everything. They do have a shopping called RTS Shopping, where you could ask for any flat out t-shirts or even flat in the curve documentary related t-shirts, hoodies, men's, women's, everything you could imagine. And you can ha even have your personalized images and your name on rts.com or RTS shopping. And another shout out I wanted to give was to Density Clothing Company from one of our very good friend and star of letting the curve to Kevin Bobick and yes do check out some amazing t-shirts and designs are available yeah uh, I have a few of them and the quality is really amazing the prints are really amazing too and and yes do support him too and that company because it's one of our official clothing for truth in plain sight and truth frequency films and welcome, guys, and what an awesome show we're going to have today. Uh, you know, you, as usual, we're going to be destroying the globe, and this is not going to be a, any other difference, but it's going to be a really interesting one because there's a lot of confusion going around about this topic, what we're going to be discussing. 
So we jump into our host and panelists. Uh, my first host, as you know, everybody know him, helicopter pilot and scientist and also star, star of Flat in the Curve, you know, a legend, a definitely a legend because many people are coming ahead right now because seeing this documentary and all these professionals that this legend came forward first and now it's really creating that effect that more professionals who had been quiet or in the closet are coming ahead and saying yes it is and they're giving also a lot of amazing details about it so it's a pleasure always to have him rob flat plane earth rob taylor how are you brother yes hello vika thank you thank you for the introduction and and yes, not afraid to stand forward as part of the first wave of truth restoration, restoring truth to science and science to the creator. And yes, uh, every day, almost or once a week, I'm meeting more and more people who are willing to, who, who know the truth. And it's, it's, it's almost to the point where it's open now. We just need to contact all those people and establish our network that that grows against the network of of fallacy because that's what it is there's is a network of fallacy the luciferian universities notice the words almost the same luciferian and university okay yes it is we must es establish and build our network of truth outside of theirs we know we're not going to we we know we can't destroy theirs we don't need to destroy theirs all we need to do is establish the network of truth. And by all means, there it is. I know plenty of people here in, in my area, Salt Lake City, Utah. I mean, just from here, just, uh, and you're going to love this, but uh, no, that's, a, that's another side note story. Great story we've got uh, today, star trails, that and the fact that whenever we see uh, a meteor, per, for example, meteor, meteor, meteorite flying through the sky, they never fly upwards. <laughs> for example, as if there's as if the earth is a ball and and meteors are flying through space upwards from the earth. It never happens. We know that. That's part of our discussion tonight. So anyway, yeah, looking forward to this. Thanks for the invite. And back to you, Vika. Awesome, brother. Always great to have you, bro. And our yeah, next co-host, everybody know him too, uh, part of our production team and also all our production heliopsychosis and two frequency films. Uh, Jeannie, how are you? Hey, Vika. I'm doing really well, brother. Thank you. Thanks for inviting me tonight on an on a awesome topic that should be discussed because uh, this is something everybody can go outside and look at. Anything we'll talk about tonight, probably. You can go watch this all yourself and prove that this stuff... Uh, it, it star trails can't happen on a ball if we're all flying through space it's not add up to what what moving objects at the same time add up to and um there's ways to, to prove it through this i think somebody said last week that some of the answers are going to be found through the stars and i i really believe that that uh, we are connected to them too and um you know, the Vatican wouldn't have such a high interest in the stars if there wasn't something real important going on on there, unless that's a, a control burn where they just want us to think that. But, uh, yeah, thanks, Vika, and welcome, everybody, to on the panel. Good to see you guys again, and thanks to everyone in, in the chat. It was great, great to have you here, spending your time with us, and um, I hope you have a good time. Let's, let's go. Awesome, Jeannie. Always a pleasure, too, brother. Thank you. And our... And next panel is also everybody know him too. Amazing monologues, amazing summarizing of most of our uh, podcast and and more stuff on flat earth. Keith, how are you? Hey, Vika, I'm doing real good. Good to be here with you guys. I'm excited about tonight. Uh, it's one of my favorite subjects. I don't have all of the answers to the mysteries of the luminaries, but the things that we observe in the sky are simply impossible on a spinning wet rock in outer space. So uh, those who are listening tonight, hopefully will gather a, a few good points that will uh, increase their confidence in our flat earth reality. Oh yeah, bro. Welcome bro. And um, Density Clothing Company, as we just mentioned, 
Kevin is here too, also a star of Flattening the Curve. Flatter Savant, how are you, Kevin? <laughs> so blessed. Thank you for the introduction. Um, shout out to you, Becca. Thank you for putting so much time, energy, and effort into this movement. Uh, Jeannie, thank you uh, so much for multiple conversations we've had. Shout out to James. We've been talking a lot back and forth recently when it comes to our observations. Um, Rob Taylor, always a pleasure and honor. Keith, thank you for doing your um, everyday walks. It's actually very inspirational and you're influencing more people than you know. But this is going to be a fun subject. So if you guys are ready, I am. Yes. All right, Kevin. Thanks for passing by, bro. And yes, our final panelist uh, for tonight is uh, everybody know him now too. He's been a on with us with last three podcasts and amazing inputs uh, with his channel, iJang9, if I'm not wrong. And yes, uh, we've been uh, in connection with some time, but we never really discussed as we are discussing with uh, James. So it's a pleasure to have him and all his input. James, how are you, bro? I'm great, you guys. Thank you so much for having me. I feel really, really lucky, you know, getting to discuss my favorite topic with people who are awake. <laughs> it's you guys. I'm happy. This is great. I'm looking forward to a good show talking about Star Trails. Yep. Awesome, bro. Welcome. No, thank you, brother. And welcome. That's also just want to say it's a chance for me to get to know you guys a bit too, right? Because I'm thinking about the stars every night, trying to figure it out with not too many people to talk to about it. So, hey, you know, tonight could be therapy for a lot of us, right? Not only us, but the listeners. I know there's a bunch of them. Oh, yeah, definitely. Because uh, most of the topic we, we discuss, uh, we really, as I say, we really destroy the globe in many ways, you know, and we are uh, threading it to the to the deepest part in every every topic we select, you know. So, and everything, most of them just, like it's shouting in our face that the earth is not a globe, you know? So this is all, won't be so much different, but yeah, it's, it's, it's important for us to see it from every aspect, every angle, you know, because the argument about the star trails, uh, like, you know, it's very famous around in the globers, you know? So it's like, there are videos, you know, which like they mentioned that is the definite proof of spirity the movements of the of the star trails in the directions they are moving you know so they say how is how is the opposite re rotation of the stars explained on flat earth this is their question that they, they, it's one of their you know huge one you know like okay we got them you know so well you know you know i figure if you've ever been inside a planetarium <laughs> it's it's a, it's well, a there it is gene yeah, there, right. there, and isn't it interesting that all planetariums have that that half sphere top to yeah. them, and and they're showing lights from a central projection <laughs> beam in the middle, which is exactly what it is. That, isn't that, that for, just just because is, the and, and, and I want to I want to state this out first. When we look patterns of the the moving stars, which which the Greeks call planets, but all they are. We know all they are are moving stars. They always follow their same semicircular path. Every now and then, they come in the middle, they do a little curly cue, and then they go back out to their circular pattern. That, that, that has no indication of, the, of their sphericity. That just means they follow a pattern, and they never move. Right, they never deviate from that. So true. <laughs> No, and no parallax either, eh, guys? There's no deviation in yeah. the angle of any star ever. Right? Yeah. That, so, you know, as, as a NASA fan back in the days, as a kid, that drove me nuts. Yeah. How does that, how are we traveling this fast for this long? And, right. this, and the Big Dipper's been the Big Dipper for over 10,000 years. I'm like, right. how is this happening? No, no deviation and no parallax. There, that destroys, right. those two facts there, that destroys the gold model. Gone. Unit, heliocentrism, yep. gone. Right there. Right. <laughs> Simple, yeah. In other words, what are we talking about? Simple astronomy. Simple astronomy. If, if, we, if everybody knew simple astronomy, there would be no globes. There would, I mean, there would be no heliocentrism, right? 
I often point. I often ask my brother who really, really knows the heliocentric side. He's a great guy. I ask him, what is the explanation for the reason why we don't see any parallax? And the answer is distance, right? Distance, course, right. Yeah. Distance. So they've masked our observable reality with the illusion of great distances. So that's why we don't see any parallax. But again, it's just But that defies you, yeah. that defies geography. Geometry. Correct. Right. Exactly. Yeah, it's, it's, it's hallucination. So true. As, as, as Vika states it, it's heliopsychosis. Just yeah. believe me. Forget the real world. Just believe me. That's all it is. It's hocus pocus. And you know the, oh, the yeah. universe <laughs> square law of light, right? That light just gets <laughs> dimmer and wider and less bright and less bright. So but they, they, want, they want everything both ways. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly, right? It's all one big... Focus, focus, magic show. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They, they hang on to something like, you know, this Star Trail thing. They said, yeah, we got something here, but they are uh, ignoring everything around that. You know, that's the problem with the, with the globe, <laughs> globe autos and the globe model that they say, okay, these are the stars, but look around, look around, do some freaking science, you know, get some <laughs> angles and see and compare, right? Yep. Yeah, you know they they've been using a um um an astrolabe for since about the year five hundred A.D. and it navigates your latitude from the North Star down ninety degrees to the equator. With North Star, you look up straight up is the North Star. If you're at the equator, it's basically at the horizon, almost gone, and anywhere in between is 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 where your your angular um is where you are in your position angular on 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 the, on the world from the equator to the north pole right right so for right. Five, so, like the, so for five i'm sorry yeah. for, for 1500 no, go ahead, go ahead, and it's and it's and it's still accurate gene the yeah, astrolabe yeah, exactly. predicts everything perfectly there is no parallax again there's no parallax and there's no deviation it's a clock our rock key is a clock and and that that's that's a triangulation on a ball again, so you can't do. So anyway, oh yeah, that's the yeah. star, like the stars in the north, the stars in the south. You know, it's not a very compelling argument the globe stars have, have, but rather <laughs> it's more of a, a flatter proof, right? Like like the star that shows that the Earth does not move at all. You know, the star trail proves. That what moves is the is the firmament, you know, the 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 celestial sphere or the celestial vault, if you want to call it. Yeah, it's the it's the um, season clock. It tells you what season we're in, very very accurately. Yeah, there you go. Right, the we see it yet again every time we analyze anything about it. There is no evidence of heliocentrism, but the uh, but the flat Earth model it works every time. It proves itself. Right, it Rob, proves coming itself. In fuzzy, Rob. That the heliocentrism, okay, uh, the heliocentrism is nothing but in Luciferian indoctrination. That's all it is. Can I um, yeah. just mention about the lack of parallax, right? Um, and I don't know if Kevin is there. Yeah, hey, Kev. You know what we were no, trying brother. to do with, with Jupiter, right, buddy? We were trying to show any deviation of the parallax of Jupiter's moons, right, based upon the observation done in real time, both of us filming Jupiter, you in New Mexico, me in Toronto. And we should see some sort of difference in the moon's angles due to our distance, right? And it'd be really intriguing to see our video results, which are coming soon. Right. <laughs> yes, I'm in the middle of editing it, but for the record, your hypothesis is definitely on track. Right. And speaking of which, we should see the moon, one of the moons of Jupiter, coming out from around the backside if, in fact, there's an yep. orbit. And I don't think it's ever been documented. So, therefore, I'm going in with a predisposed bias that there is no orbit of any moon happening on Jupiter because that would indicate sphericity. And we know that there are no balls up there in space. Let's see. Really, really, exactly. really, I love it. Exactly. You just said no. space has no balls, and you're right. That's why um, me and James were disproving the whole theory of retrograde stars and motions and parallax and all at the same time. 
and you're welcome to join all of you guys and everyone out there with a p900 or p1000 contact us please Let's get more cameras in the sky Oh, yeah, I heard, yeah. I, I heard you guys talking about the Jupiter and the moon today. So I did a little bit of looking into that uh, on just online in gen, gen, uh, general and also on YouTube. And I literally could not find anything except cartoons. I mean, there's there's these yep. cartoons <laughs> on YouTube yep. of these moons <laughs> orbiting around Jupiter. And the whole thing is a cartoon, but they're putting it out there as if it's a legitimate video that they're recording these moons going around Jupiter nothing but cgi nonsense and 99 percent of people on our plane probably doesn't realize that it's all everything that they look when they're researching astronomy is cgi it's very rare to see actual footage of anything and everything that i've seen actual footage of jupiter and its moons it always looks the same the moons always look in the same distance they always look yeah. exactly the same and i have back in 2020 when we had the uh the, the christmas star with the uh, convergence of, or, or the conjunction, I guess they call it. Saturn of, and Jupiter. Of Saturn and Jupiter. You know, I was watching that. I had my telescope out. I was looking up. And guess what? They were both in focus at the same time. Yep. I mean, it's, it's trillions it's, of miles difference. Yeah, in, yeah exactly. In the field, right? How many millions or tens of millions of miles different are they? And they're yeah. both in focus in my telescope at the same time. Yeah, hey, how's that so? Yeah, it makes no sense on the heliocentric hypothesis. I once asked that question, and someone into photography answered, would the infinity focus produce that result? I said, fine, fair enough, but look at the distance between Jupiter and Saturn. We're talking hundreds yeah. of millions of miles. Come on. I mean, at what point do you have to say light does not travel <laughs> infinitely? Yeah, Come on. Right. Exactly. That's why yeah. me and James, whenever we did our observation, uh, we pulled it back from autofocus and manual focus multiple times. Yep. And we were filming it at the exact same time. And just like he said earlier, he's in Toronto. I'm in New Mexico. And I just wanted to uh, collaborate the footage so everybody gets to see it. But, um, yeah, exactly. So glad we're doing that experiment, right? We'll figure out new ones step by step. And Star Trails is another. Thank goodness we're talking about Oh, yeah. Tonight. Oh, yeah, for sure. At the end of our podcast, we're going to be discussing what we could be doing as an experiment. We could, you know, some possibilities after going through what we wanted to discuss here. You know, the globe Earth, uh, the things the globe Earth say about the star trail actually contradicts their own model. You know, by mentioning that the star rotates or moves in one direction or another, they are saying that they're the ones that move, not the earth, giving like almost giving credit to geocentrism, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And they'll explain it too. Like imagine a dome over the earth and, you know, and the stars spinning inside it. They say stuff like that. Just like a planetarium. They got no way around it, really. They just got to try and hide things on us. <laughs> well, you can't so hide imagine the next time. <laughs> You know, yeah, you go ahead, Kevin. Once you're doing your own observable, repeatable, testable experiment for yourself, it's like, what are you going to do? Like, put a blindfold over yourself so you don't see it for your own? Do you know what I mean? Like, you're doing yeah, it actually. for yourself and seeing it through your own observation. There's no. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's that. why I think tonight is going to be a great, great one because everybody can do this stuff. And if you're interested, it's exactly right there. Right there right so, there. next time, any, <clears throat> next time, any globe trolls. <laughs> trying to say, hey, why are the star moving in the different directions? Say, first of all, thank you for accepting that the Earth don't move, that the star moves. Thank you, you know. So, for everyone who's listening, you know, so a great way to shut them out. Yeah, exactly. What's his name? That was um, trying to hate on uh, Gregory Lessing Garrett. I was like, put me, Vicka, Rob Taylor on a podcast, and I'll give the guy a thousand dollars just to be on a live podcast with us. <laughs> <laughs> got a oh got yeah a question can I, can I ask um, you guys i need your opinion on this because there is confusion in the truth community and the heliocentric side i know this from my brother and i know this from having discussions with the awakened people we are under the illusion or the thought not the illusion that star trails are going counterclockwise in the north and that confused me. And I wanted to say, why? Is that a good time to bring it up? Um, if you wouldn't mind me 
go yeah. ahead and conclude in your answer. Um, I've actually discussed this with uh, True Man Truer. Uh, Rob, he's a very good guy. I love the guy. He's very popular on TikTok, by the way. Shout out. Rob's a good uh, guy, yeah. Yeah, I love the guy, right? Everybody knows Absolutely. Him. Yeah, real cool. <laughs> what I've explained on an interview with him is what I'll try and explain to you guys, which the same way my friend um, explained to me. It's like having a broomstick with brushes on each end and then rolling it forward. And then you looking on the right hand side, rolling, rolling the broomstick Perfect. and it going counterclockwise. And then whenever you look right, it's going counterclockwise. But whenever you look left, it's going, um, it, it, well, whenever you look right, it's going counterclockwise. Whenever you look left, it's going clockwise. It's the perspective of where you're at. So whenever in the uh, southern hemisphere, <laughs> that's uh -huh. when you see the stars going clockwise instead of counterclockwise. Can I comment on that, Kev? Is want to say that the the belief is that the in the truth community that the directions are only perceptions. Only reason exactly. I say right. Yeah, that's what he's saying. But, and also, we have to consider the fact that the sun and moon always go east to west and now I want to say this from my perspective here in the north okay when i'm looking at north polaris everything rises at three o'clock moves to six o'clock and to nine o'clock at a set and that's clockwise do you guys agree on that okay okay how how then can the stars in the northern hemi plane be going counterclockwise, that would be contradictory to the movement of the sun. That, that's my that's that's my point. That's my uh, my sorry. That's my position yeah. here. The right. the Rakia dome. It's a dome. If it all moved and Aries failure. Let's go back to Aries failure, eighteen seventy one. He proved that all the stars moved in unison overhead. Okay, if they're all moving in unison, then they should all move in the same direction. As they're the all stuck in the same. They're all stuck in the same mold overhead. Right. The sun and the moon, let, let me point this out. I mean, just real quick here. The sun and the moon are the only stars that don't follow the circular pattern. They've got that analemma. They've got the analemma. All the other stars oh, oh, overhead, they, they follow that, the circular pattern around the North Star. The exactly. sun and the moon have that analemma. analemma but let's, not, let's not forget that, right? You see yes, what I mean? Sir, yes, sir. But otherwise, they're all stuck in the Rakia Dome. Rob, you, Rob, you have a lot of distortion with, with your mic, Rob. <clears throat> oh, okay. Uh, All right. So uh, adding to what James was saying, too, what I wanted to add, like the east okay. to west uh, this, this move is, rotation. Uh, I just wanna, my, my two points are this. 1871 Aries failure. The, the Rakia Dome. All the stars are stuck in the Rakia Dome except for the moving stars, which are the sun and the moon, and then the other what the Greeks call planets, but we know they're just they're just moving stars. So the sun and the moon have their analemma, but the other the other moving stars have their circular shape with their little curly cue in the middle. But everything else is stuck in that Rakia dome. Rakia dome. They're all stuck there. They all move in the same direction. That's my point there. Exactly. The difference between the stars' rotation and in quotation planets is that the planets go off of a spiral graph um, motion around the North Star Polaris instead of a circular motion around the North Star Polaris compared to the in quotation planets and stars. Okay. Right. Can I right. Just... right. So what? Right. <clears throat> yep. Yeah. Okay. Can I add something before we continue? Yeah. yeah. So speaking about east to west, you know, so the, the constellation looks like it's moving east to west to the depending on the, on the observer. The observer is, is very, yep. very important here. Yep. When, for example, it, it totally changes if the observer is, observer is looking south and the constellations yeah. are right. going from east to west. That is from your left to right. But when the yep. same person turns around and looks to the north, the stars are going the same way, east to west. But now it's your right to left. That's... That's one of the key important factor that we have to understand the east to west yeah. of the observer. The observer could be anywhere in this world. Okay? That's because it could be what you're pointing that, out Rob, is a Rob. variation in the observer. The observer is exactly. the variance there. We're getting incorrect reporting. Well, Rob, whenever you take a star trajectory, whenever you're at the equator, you'll see 
um, a tordal effect, a torus effect, like you looking up upon the star trajectories. One is going clockwise, the other is going counterclockwise. That's at the equator, which basically proves that we live in a torus effect. You know, and, and the, the painting right. by Van Gogh, Starry Night, um, shows that, you know. Uh, okay. Right. Well, Ru then, then is that, are, is that observed? Is that, is that a fact? I don't know. That's that a that testable with data hypothesis and conclusions. Okay. Right. So you're telling me that, that even though they, they're stuck in the same Rakia dome, they do, they do, uh, they do seem to orbit. They, they turn overhead in different directions. Yes, sir. Have you no? Then at the equator, it's a, it's a it. it's a visual um, effect. It's a Phenomenon. weird the observer. So there there are a few factors that needs to be counted in in this. Okay, what is happening? Also, we have the that atmospheric refraction is also playing a very important part in right. how we see things. Okay, and yeah, uh, no, answering to good. what what Rob was saying, also was Rob was asking. Yes, it's all about the observer, the the it's Rakia dome. You want to call it the, and, the celestial and, sphere, or you want to call it a dome that right. is moving in one direction only. Okay, the sun and the moon and the most of the luminary are moving in the same direction. Maybe they could go retrograde, and we have the analemma there to the different height, maybe because of that. But it's all east to west of the observer. Yes, sir. That has to be really important. Yeah, go ahead. No, Just completely. That was very well said. Couple, couple of thoughts on that, guys. There's a, a large group who believes that there is no circling. It's all left to right, east to west, right? Have and they done just, their own observable, repeatable, testable experiments? Well, here's, here's the, the, the dilemma, and I'm trying to be an honest observer. What happens sometimes, Kev, is what we perceive as one direction can actually be another direction. Can I walk you through a visual demonstration, if you will? Hold out, and I think I've list, talked about this last time, but if you hold in front of your face, your hand and hold up your index finger. So you're pointing up, okay? Slowly start making a clockwise motion with your hand at chin level. Okay, so if you're doing that, now slowly, you agree that this is clockwise. Yes, sir. We're moving clockwise. Now slowly raise it up to above your eye level. And there's a point where it flips and all of a sudden what was once clockwise is now counterclockwise. Do you see it? And trying to catch that moment when it flips. And this is why I feel that what we are perceiving as counterclockwise motion here in the north of the stars is actually perhaps clockwise or even a straight line due to the two factors, the shape of our eyes and the if there is a dome, perhaps that is contributing to the illusion of what is actually a straight line could be perceived as clockwise or counterclockwise, depending on where you are. Not against the circle, but I know there are big problems with the AE circle. The Enoch square is interesting because it addresses it. And I just want to say we're getting there. We want an honest answer, right? How do you feel about the clockwise right. motion demonstration? Right. J James, but this is the thing. Uh, okay, the the square earth theory it's could be true, but it's more about the terra, te, te, terra, the land. You know, the the physical land being square because the luminary is moving in a square orbit. It's almost impossible. It's it's my opinion that it could be impossible because. According to all our different researches, everything moves around the north center, be it magnetic or a mountain or some kind of force or, or the toroidal field, whatever we want to call it. It, Ready, it, um, it um, goes okay. in a circle. Yep, go ahead, Kevin. Eddie Allen Carr's um, book, the 16 or what is it, 19 flights that disprove the globe is complete confirmation that the azimuthal equidition projection is accurate when it comes to airplane Excellent, flights. excellent point. I agree. But not dismissing that, Kev, but yes, I know there's problems with each model, right? And that's intellectually honest to admit. 
And the only thing is, I do have some issues that our observations do not match the assertions about things like the Aurora Australis as a localized phenomenon. And if Aurora Australis existed on the AE circle, it would surround the entire perimeter of Earth. And that doesn't make sense to me. But then again, flights on the square don't make sense to me either. So there's problems, right, guys? There's issues. I don't know if you agree, well, Jeff, but just want to put I, that. And Rob, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, yes, uh, James, I, I want, I'm going to submit this. If there is an Aurora Australis, Australis, it's local. It's when the sun, when the sun gets down there, it, it reflects off the, off the dome, wherever that light source is. It's not universal. It's not 360 degrees all the way around the circle. It's local to wherever the light source is. That makes sense. Yep, it does. I have to give you that. I just, I, I always want to verify things, guys. And that's the only reason why, you know, I think I just want, I'm an unbiased observer, intrigued about the cosmos. I want to figure it out. I yeah, think indeed. Yeah. What, one, of the, one of the best things we, any of us can use is common sense, okay? Yep. If, we could, if we observe something repeatedly, observable, testable, repeatable, for example, I, I'm just coming to grips with the fact that the stars do appear to turn in different directions at the equator well if they do it doesn't change the flat earth model okay number one it doesn't change the model we know the earth is not a spinning ball in imaginary it'll, space we know that it'll, but it'll refine it exactly it refines it and it informs us even more okay so the stars operate in two different directions well that doesn't change our model it changes our understanding of the model it's a great, well, uh, great point, point you made about the reflection. Perhaps it's a reflection. Absolutely, right? If there is a yeah. dome, maybe that's the way light works. We're re-understanding light and perspective as well as the cosmos. Yes, sir. Yeah. It, let's, say, let's say we're going camping. we got a big, round, circular tent. Well, we take our flashlight and we point it against the edge of the tent. Well, that edge of the tent's going to glow. The rest of the tent's not going to glow because there's no light there. It's literally as simple as that, right? And then, and then the fact that and I just I'm just going to bring this up. It's it's a similar concept. The reason the the sun oh, I'm sorry the reason the moonlight goes away when the when the sun's orbit gets close to the when the sun's rotation gets close to the moon is it because the sunlight drowns out the light of the of the moon. There you go. For, exactly. Just like just like just to make the just to make the point when we're in the city. And we got a lot of city lights, ambient light all around us. We look up, we can't see a lot of stars because the light of the close lights of the city drown out. They, they, they bleed out the lights of the stars way, way higher in the firmament. Whereas we go out in the desert and there's, or in the countryside, there's no ambient lighting out there. We see far more stars out there. Well, if we apply that concept to the sun and the analemma of the sun and the moon, well, it makes complete sense. As the sun gets closer to the moon, it drowns out. The white light, okay, let me say again, the white light of the sun drowns out the, the cold, lesser light of the moon, and we see less of it. Hence, okay, hence the, the, the moon phase. Exactly. I, th I think we can figure out the, maybe the shape of the realm. To absolute, if we just start studying the motion of the stars and sun and moon and wandering stars, I know we can, guys. It's the it has to be because what else could we do? We can't fly, you know, planes up and take pictures of the continents and the shape. We need to use our imagination here of how we're going to solve the shape or not. Right, the, right? Or now, what, now what, James, what is this place? We, we no long, we can no longer fly up. We used to, when they made the Monte Urbano map and all those other maps, they were flying. We can't do it now because the Luciferians control all the flights. That's why we can't. Exactly. Right, so right. And, 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 and James, point. this is the thing. What could be done is like there are, there are, there are things yeah, we, could, we could do with, with the star. It's very important, like, you know, but the key words, as I said earlier, to perspective and atmospheric, at, atmospheric yeah. refraction has to be taken in considered. It's very, very important. For example, for example, a person in in Argentina, you know, Argentina is supposed to be at the tip, you know, and uh, and it looks north, you know. So he, he will see the stars rotate from east to west. That is counterclockwise for that person. But it, but if 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 he do in the same place and looking opposite, 
into the south, he will be looking, he will be seeing moving from east to west, but in anti-clockwise direction. So, and the same could be done even from Mexico, for example. And Mexico is supposed to be almost in the northern hemisphere. So what these globe Earth are saying, that is only happening in the differences in the north in the northern and the southern hemisphere but what we are trying what we are getting here too is that this phenomena can be seen from many different places i think it, it could be seen from uh, every place i'm not very sure and we could do a kind of a test everybody together to see exactly how it's going you know like is it possible to see everywhere and if it's happening the same thing everywhere that destroys the globe that destroys the globe in a way that the phenomena they're saying that is happening in two hemispheres, we are showing him that it's happening everywhere. And it's all because of atmospheric refraction and perspective of the person of the, or the observer, wherever you be in this world, on this plane. Very indeed, well from that perspective. Yes, indeed. Let's, and uh, for example, just bringing up another perspective issue, when we take a line of longitude from the northern hemisphere to the southern hemisphere and we observe the angles to the sun on the same longitude throughout the year, the sun never calculates. It, we can never triangulate the we can never triangulate the light in the sky. I, I guarantee you the same is true for the moon and the other moving stars, which the Greeks call planets, but we can never triangulate them because all they are are light in the sky. So when, when we talk about oh, perspective, yeah. we, we have to remember the model and that we're not looking at something solid. We're not looking at a solid object. That changes everything about our observation. Well said. Well, uh, and, and when we talk about perspective, we have to change not only the model of, 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 the, of the entity itself, what is the model of the Earth, we have to change our model of our understanding. We have to recognize that, that our, our thinking that's been, that's been shoved upon us by the, the, the heliocentrists, we don't have all the understanding that we need. We need to change our own perspective, our own thinking, our own thought process about the, about the creation. That, that's that changes a lot. We got two variables there. Of the variable of the model we think we're looking at, and then the model of our calculation of that model. <laughs> Seriously, that's a, lot of, that's a lot of adjustment that we need to do, literally to understand the very world in which we live. Fabulous, eh? Oh, yeah. And, and when we do this, once we have reached that point, the, and, and you know, let me, let me go back to this. It all begins with basic astronomy. Basic astronomy and any of us, uh, any of us, we can realize that from any of our observation point on the ground, we can only see a small fraction of the sky. Back to the perspective point, okay? We we must understand that if we're going to make model of everything, we have to look on a much much larger scale, and that's what we're discussing right now. Well, up. Oh yeah, I don't know what uh, happened with James. James, are you there? Because your your screen is blacked out. So, are you still there, James? We don't hear you. So maybe you need to uh, jump out and get back in, James. So there's a there's also a application called Stellarium, which actually shows what we are speaking about, you know, actually. So anybody could go to this, this application, see the celestial dome. You can literally move from your location and see the differences, you know, in a, in a way. You know, so there, so there are tools that already exist in a way which could, which is showing what the real movements and how we per, how we are perceiving the the anti-clockwise and the clockwise difference in the same place, just moving around. Okay, we don't even need to, you know. So, yep. 
if you re if you need the truth, it's right there. You just need to look in, right? Definitely. Yep, definitely. There it is. Whenever I was in, Argentina, I uh, wish I would have taken a star trajectory observation when I was there, um, just to kind of prove the point. And because because when we use those models, you know what those models do? It changes our perspective of our own thought process. We need to realize that these these new models they show us. The, the altered apparition, the apparent reality from these models. That's why we use the model of the model. Voila. It helps us understand our own thinking better. Because nobody's, nobody's perfect to use the expression, right? Until we understand the model. And when it does, it perfects our own understanding. Exactly. Guess oh, yeah. I'm back. Who oh, now you're back, James. I, this is what happens up in Canada, guys. What did I miss? <laughs> <laughs> we were speaking about Stellarium. Uh, we were speak. We were speaking about an application called Stellarium that you should check it out. Maybe you know, and uh, you have the whole uh, celestial sky in there. And from your location, you could just move around and see how how the constellation looks like they are moving in different directions. Yeah, go ahead. I, right. I, to, thanks for picking me up where we left off, guys. I just want to say, absolutely, the cosmos is what we're trying to establish what's going on, right? But I started to figure out what the heck is going on with the sun and moon. I got to figure that out first before we graduate to the cosmos, right? That's the only reason why I haven't informed myself as much as I have or would like to about the star trails. I've been so obsessed with trying to figure out what the moon is doing every month, as well as the sun, right? That's a good place to start before, I think. We start with the star, star trails, right? I mean, <laughs> I'm sure you guys agree, yeah. right? We just can't jump in and like, know the stars. we got to figure out the moon first. At least that's One what word. I think. Oh, yeah. We, we, have some amazing, uh, we have some amazing content and discussions and podcasts about the sun, the moon, and multiples ones, James. We have done a lot of stuff uh, in video format and and also in podcast and from quite a few years so we are looking to many different things so we are exploring every aspect of it and we 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 shred it how we how it goes on and if we need to do it a few times we would do it and we get in more details about it because we the more you dig in the more we come to know right yeah, we learn more all the time <clears throat> Not to be uh, basic about it, my understanding, but it, it, the sun and moon are part of the cosmos and they all seem to be doing the same thing and moving in the same way, right? So, okay, so let's establish some knowns first, I felt. And that's why, yeah, it's time. We got to figure out the stars because it's obvious. I think I know what the sun and moon are doing each month. The new moon goes back to the sun, no matter what, every single month. Now, what are the stars above that doing? They seem to be moving faster in the same direction. How is that possible? That's <laughs> just, man. Yeah, boy. Good, uh, well, okay. well, James, James, I can answer this. Take, take the semi-sphere, right? You know it's a solid semi-sphere, but evidently, I, I'm learning this for myself, that some of those stars appear to move in opposite directions. Oh, well, they're, they're, their movements are still stuck in that semi-sphere over the, the flat stationary Earth. Right with with topography, right? It's, There's it's, the model, yeah. the the semi circle, the semi semi sphere, right? Half sphere over the solid Earth plane below, and then in the middle, we got these we got these moving stars that seem to turn in a circular motion, but always around that north star in the center. They always turn around the center, even the sun and moon. Sun and moon have their analemma. The, the other stars above that, they have their Semi, the circular motion with the coding cue in the middle. There we go. There's the model. Is it not? Can I say there's apparently the Southern Cross, right? Or the crux, or it's being observed. But is it, in fact, above yeah. the South Pole? Is that, is that known? Is that absolute? I don't know. Is, I well, what do you mean there is no South Pole? Well, I mean, this is the thing, right? Technically, there should be a South Pole. If yeah, it's sigma. Even, no, it's not. No, look. look. Let me tell you, it's, I've studied that. It's a bit off. It's, it's not, uh, even if they, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, Rob. Would, we, wouldn't, we used, I've used this militarily. We used the Southern Star 
or the Southern Cross, that is, Southern Cross, because if we're in a Southern southern latitude, many times, and I mean in the military, if I get, if I get shot down or if I'm on an operation in the Southern areas, I can't see the North Pole or the North Star. So I have to use the Southern Cross. So that's what they use it as the Southern Cross, okay? But all it is, it's a 180 degree out from the North Star. That's it. That's it. That's all it is. There's no Southern Point other than a 360 degree Southern Point, which is the opposite of the North Pole in any direction. Imagine, if you will, uh, two vortex holes, if you will, on a torus, a toroidal field, both one in the north and one in the south. Could, in fact, there be actually two vortex points? I don't know. And I'm not against what you said, Rob, because I hear you, man. It well, was, it's interesting. It's more of a ball, though. The, the North Star is the they, they, they speak the they, they speak the about Earth Sigma. They, they see they speak Sigma they say about that there's a star uh, called Sigma Octantis that is supposed to be in the south, equivalent to Polaris in the south. But this star has no properties, you know. This star has zero properties of what Polaris that, have, and that, it's not even visible to a human eyes. Yeah, that right. doesn't make sense on the toroidal model. Okay, let's. Let's assume a toroidal model, okay? The North Star is above the plane. The Southern Star would have to be below the plane. It's just a reference point they're using. There is just a reference point they're using. Uh, they're supposed to have their, their, their magnetic South Pole Star. This one, as I mentioned, Sigma Octantis. So... And, and it but doesn't... There, it doesn't is is visible. No. So how are they going to navigate... Or do a reference which is not even visible that time. Yep, there is no southern attraction. There is no southern pole. Period. Well, that's, there's there's that's... only the there is only the north pole, the the, the center attraction. There's our mag our, our magnets called the compass only points to north. Everything else is south. I, I like what you're saying. I know. I w that's why I'm talking to people in New Zealand and I'm asking them basic questions about where did the sun come up today and where did it set? Where did the moon come up and where did it set? And they're, and she's great. She's figuring it out. You know, These, this is what we need. Honest observers in the southern hemiplane, which are close to where my eyes need to be and all of our eyes, just to verify what you're saying, you know, brother. Right? You agree, Rob? I mean, it's oh, yeah. always good to get well, verifications. I, I guarantee you, I guarantee you, you take the 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 AE map. Take the AE map, and, and you could draw draw the path of the sun and the moon on it. Somebody in New Zealand is going to confirm what you can draw on your map with your finger. You see what I mean? They will confirm what you've got because the AE map is the model. It's I. That's why I like and I ask these questions, brother, and I just like to do so with other people who have figured out we're not on a. Board, oh, and right? by all means, I, I wish you all the best, and and I can't wait to see your conclusions. I know because that will that will confirm yeah. what we can imagine, right? Exactly. We have to imagine until we see it, right? It, but it'll either, match. I guarantee you, it's going to match ninety percent. Exactly, and either way, it confirms what is true, right? If I if I'm yeah. able to disprove it, great, and if I'm not. Awesome, because then your 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 explanations work perfectly. That's the only reason. It's like the most exciting thing for me now, trying to figure out what is going on up there and can we know as much as possible. That's the only reason why I made my YouTube page, guys, because now all of a sudden everything comes alive. What is going on up there? It's amazing. Well, yeah, exactly. I was talking with a good friend of mine. I invited him on to our show twice, twice in a row. I hope he comes on sometime. He lives close to me, five miles away from me. He's a guru just like any of us. He'd fit in. He'd fit in. He's a real nice guy. His parents are from Tonga. Real nice guy. I mean, he looks like he's built like Arnold Schwarzenegger, but he's the most humble and polite guy you'd ever know. All right? But anyway, but I, I was talking with him earlier today. And, I, and, and James, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to branch off from what you just said. I'm going to start asking people this. Would you like to know the truth of the world? Would you like to know about how, would you like to release your mind and all the worries of your mind? Would you like to know how beautiful the world really is? And obviously they're going to say, yeah, what do you mean, Rob? I'm going to say, study flat earth. <laughs> that's, that's when we realize the world is a beautiful thing. James, you, you mentioned the stars. The stars are a beautiful thing. The earth underneath it, it's a beautiful thing. 
once we learn what it really is, that's when it comes to life. That's when, that's when all the colors come out and the, and the, and the, and the deceit of the heliocentrism. We live in the, we live in the dark side. We literally live in the dark side. It's called heliocentrism. Totally. Right? Oops, Once we see the photos, out. that's when all that's okay. Sorry, that's when all the colors come out when we look at flat Earth. Totally oh yeah, definitely. Out. And the other thing I wanted to mention about the stars is also a very important aspect about about the nautical astronomy. You know, the science that have allowed navigators to guide themselves since ancient times, right? And thanks to the stars, which are same. Yes. I know a and pilot. Always in I know the a same pilot. place forever, right? Yep. Go I ahead. know a Navy pilot, a Navy pilot who flew in the South Pacific, navigating by the stars. Absolutely, and all the ships. That's what they did, of course. Anciently, oh, yeah, hundreds, I, I, hundreds of I, years. I, I have met, I have uh, had uh, discussions with some globe uh, people, like who were saying they use GPS and a lot of stuff, and they are really, you know, really out there and and it, they say in the end when there is nothing left the, the the only thing they could depend on is with their charts or the maps right. and the stars that's it and with their compass right. that's how they're, they navigate their star charts yes back to basics yep yeah oh, exactly yeah. and, and i'll tell you this as a pilot whenever whenever we're navigating we have to be able to rely on something that will never fail a machine will always fail what are you going to do when you've got no electricity? Well, look up in the sky. Where's your north, east, south, and west? Right? And where am I going? There you go. We all kind of seem oh, to yeah. know where, where north is, right, guys? We all know instinctively, like, where north is. At least I do. Do you feel the same? And we don't have that same association with south. At least I've noticed. So maybe, yeah, there is something there. Maybe there is only like one central point. It's just I, interesting trying to figure it out, though, you know. I think they make a big deal out of the north to keep our attention off the south. Yeah, the, the, exactly. Yeah. Well, the south, is the, where all the, our, the, south, the south is where all the resorts are. <laughs> all, all the the 360 degree ring of that's where all the resorts and that's where all the that's where all the wealthy that's where they live when they're not posing as politicians. I would Crazy. say possibly, quite probably. Well, hey, if we can go back to for a minute to the Southern Cross and uh, the Big into you know the one of the globe arguments is that somebody in Australia and then somebody else in South Africa. And somebody else in South America can all look up at the same time and see the same star in the sky. And they're trying to get that as proof of the globe. And uh, Eddie Allen Carr did the best video on this that I've seen where he's uh, debunking, debunking or exposing Professor Phony. I think he calls the guy the not a Professor Dave. He's a professional paid liar. But anyway, the, the fact is that it's not dark everywhere for 24 hours a day. So you can't look down and see the exact same star at the exact same time from all three locations. You, right. Because the entire sky, as you say, the entire sky is rotating at, at, around us. And if, so if someone in, uh, let's just say 9 p.m. in Australia is looking up and seeing the star, that person that's over in South America is not going to look up because it's not dark yet. He won't be able to see the star yet. That's correct. They so, don't see the same stars. That's a fallacy right there, Keith. That's a yeah. fallacy on its face, right? Yeah. They, 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 they don't tell the truth. They, they're, they're trying to confuse people with things that they just don't even think about. That it's just not dark on the entire earth at the same time. But as the entire sky clock or whatever it is rotates over us, yes, then somebody in Australia can see the star. Then somebody in South Africa can see the same star a few hours later. Then somebody in South America can see the same star a few hours right. later. And that's what they mean. They, they mean the same group of stars, but not all at the same time, which is what which is what's, which is their 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 implication? It's just garbage. Exactly, exactly, and different angles too. It's very important the yeah. angles because because imagine uh, a person below Polaris watching Polaris starts going away from Polaris. It's just gonna start dipping. The more far you go, the more dipping is gonna do until it's somebody seeing it on the on totally a different side on a on a almost on horizon. So since 
and at some point maybe some people even won't see it right so the same thing happened with the clouds it's, uh, you see we have clouds above us and we have clouds away from us and we have clouds that are almost touching the horizon and the, it's, it's the law of perspective that is playing a very important part when we are observing everything around us including the terrain you know and the upper atmosphere or the luminaries well that's that's right and i just want to say you know we are the uh, one of the ideas that i had was to do a live real time observation of something simple like the moonrise happening at the same time as the moon set at the same time video recorded and that at least gives one the perspective of where this you know the size right the shape the distance that's all and then and then sorry i lost my train of thought but really what you were addressing was perspective right our warped sense of perspective has caused this confusion and i think yeah. that, right <laughs> yeah let's do what? these simple real time observations to start with the basics It'll, go ahead brother rob yeah so well just i'm just seconding and, and branching off from what you said my 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 undergraduate engineering degree was all about seeing the bigger picture always once you get this model branch off to the bigger picture and then leap forward to the next bigger bigger picture right and it's all about the perspective once we recognize that our, that our perspective is flawed because we never knew about all this well let's let's camp out at the next larger perspective then let's analyze that and then then and then reach up like a monkey climbing a tree to the next higher branch let's go to the next perspective and let's get as high as we can as fast as we can voila i'm agreeing completely with you and and now i know what it was when it had to do with perspective to stop perspective fooling us simple observation of sunrise and sunset happening at the same time it's a phenomenon which is observable that overrides any distortion or confusion in perspective if i'm making sense do you know like Say that uh, again james okay so for instance my friend zach in jakarta Indonesia, right? In Jakarta, he's filming the sunrise happening and I think that could possibly be happening at the same time I'm witnessing the sunset. And if that's true, then we know it's one sun and not two suns, right? And then we also know where Zach is exactly from my perspective sort of. You know, I'm getting there, but I haven't quite figured out how this helps. It, but at least it looks it's like uh James, it looks like it's one sun, you know, because uh, uh, the time zones are very important in this part. Because the time differences we have on the on the clock and the way all the degrees are, so it's it's the light, the night, the evenings are are how you say is coordinating with the time zones. So good point. Maybe good point. it could help. Yep. That's why I keep brainstorming these experiments we can do. So the only way I can remember them is to sometimes write them down or bring them up in chats like this. And whoever's listening out there, if you've got some ideas about things we can do or tests we can do, we have the equipment and the motivation to make it happen. Oh, yeah, <laughs> definitely, definitely. <laughs> the, yeah. the moon is yeah, a good one. I think um, the moon would be a great spot to do something like that because it's, so big everybody yeah. can just walk out and see it the moon <laughs> so yeah and, the moon and, needs the moon needs many many episodes you know it's, it's, yeah. we could we yeah. could know a lot of things but they still had the moon had that energy of mystery and magnetism right so it has that inside it to keep its secrets you know so what an awesome show and topic we're having today guys so we're going to be taking a short break and we're going to be right back Excellent. and we're going to continue with some amazing stuff and We'll be right back, guys. Cool. There is nothing you cannot be. There is nothing you cannot do. There is nothing you cannot have. You are the most magnificent, the most remarkable, the most splendid being God has ever created. But who could reject such wondrous magnificence? But you do not know who you are. And you think you are a great deal less. I tell you this. You are your own rule maker. 
you set the guidelines. And you decide how well you have done, how well you are doing. For you are the one who has decided who and what you really are and who you want to be. The process of creation starts with thought, an idea, conception, visualization. Everything you see was once someone's idea. Nothing exists in your world that did not first exist as pure thought. Next comes the word. Everything you say is a thought expressed. It is creative and sends forth creative energy into the universe. Next comes action. Actions are words moving. Words are thoughts expressed. Thoughts are ideas. Go first to your highest thought about yourself. Imagine the you that you would be if you lived that thought every day. Imagine what you would think, do, and say, and how you would respond to what others do and say. This whole process is a massive move to consciousness. What you will find out if you undertake this challenge is that you've spent half your life unconscious. That is to say, unaware on a conscious level of what you are choosing in the way of thoughts, words, and deeds until you experience the aftermath of them. Then when you experience these results, you deny that your thoughts, words, and deeds had anything to do with them. I want to remind you to continue to dream and dream big. Welcome back, guys. What an awesome show we're having today with uh, Rob, Gene, Keith, Kevin, and James. With one of our very interesting topic. And yes, before we jump in back, I want to say a quick shout out to the people in the chat. Thanks, everyone, for being here. There's uh, Dr. Frankenstein, Tommy Rogers, Zoo Scott, and there's Stephanie Campbell. This is Jay Daddy, hey brother. And there is uh, Effie Nation. And there is Dr. Frankenstein. Lisa Marie Nicolas. Then there is Corn Fed Life. And some people from Facebook too. And then there is Jesse Johan's mom. And there is the glory of Yas creation. More people from Facebook. Then there's also RTS updates in the chat with a message support. Flat Earth Director Vika Drazi with YouTube. Money icon here on this chat. All donations will go to the production of his next Flat Earth, Flat Earth documentary coming soon. Oh, yeah. Big shout out to RTS. Then there is also Tehuti Alchemist. Then there is Jeff Cooper. Hey, Jeff Cooper, brother. Long time no see. Great to see you, bro. And then there is, yep, more people from Facebook. Yeah. And yeah, welcome everyone, guys. And uh, Star Trails. The other thing I wanted to about this conversation about Star Trails is like we have to imagine also. How would the celestial dome we call the dome would be without this atmosphere? Okay, because the, there are key factors in the atmosphere which are playing is is humidity in the in the atmosphere. We are speaking about like tons of gallons of water in in form of vapor invisible vapor that exists in our atmosphere so so if you could imagine the whole celestial plane instead of celestial dome above us and what happens to that plane? Everything with its with its uh, movement or rotation, the whole the whole luminaries with the star constellation moving about in a plane, a flat plane, and then 
we see this move. Imagine that if we imagine this movement happening above us, and then after we add that atmosphere to it, because what the atmosphere is doing could be doing because of the humidity in the air. It's like imagining we take a glass of water and put a pencil inside the glass of water. The image refracts, it magnifies, it amplifies, right? So the yeah. same thing is happening with the with the moisture in the air. And that's where all the chaos begins. Can be a different speeds, sure. different, also, yeah, different speeds, yeah, different speeds, different tra trajectory, different uh, clockwise, anti-clockwise. But whole, you know what? The yep. the solution to that, Vika. Yes, we could have obviously ambient refraction, right? But over hundreds of years, give over the time of three hundred sixty-five days. We're going to have plenty of, of days where there's no refraction, right? There's no magnetic, there's no uh, atmospheric refraction. We can go back to those days and look at everything. So, so you're exactly right. So in other words, let's not base our model on just one day when we have a lot of refraction. Let's base our model on the entire year. Right, Rob, right, Rob but, the, but the sunset and the sunrise, the planet rise or the constellation rise and set, we are seeing that effect of rise and fall. It's only because of the atmosphere could be possible because this thing is not setting and, and, and rising. These things are in their own orbit, which is supposed to be, looks like that is circular above us. So we are trying to say the whole system is working above as a plane or at different altitudes but working about in their proper orbits. But we, here on Earth, due to the atmosphere, due to the humidity, and due to the whatever refraction it could be happening, not only the atmosphere, but all around, that we see things more yeah, magnified, well. more close up, more, more near, more movement, more abstract movement, or different speeds, or different, you know, or, or moving in different... Uh, direction like a clockwise and anticlockwise, clockwise but but as i as we mentioned earlier too that the observer too also is important during this but what i mean to say is that the whole atmosphere is playing a huge part in how we are perceiving what is really happening above and and could be happening about is just an independent movement all above us at different altitudes but a much more controlled uh, movement rotation instead of, uh, uh, you know, the celestial dome is because we perceive that, that dome. It's a celestial plane, could be, right? Just a... Yeah, Vika, yeah. I've thought about this quite a bit, and I think you know, what you're saying is that the stars are all flat, just like the topographical Earth is flat, and somehow that entire flat sky or celestial ceiling is, uh, you know, all those flat, it's spinning over top of us, but it appears to be a dome because of our own perspective or the, the humidity in the atmosphere. Just like the sunrise or noontime or the sunset, the sun is still always at the same altitude at all three of those. And so yeah, the, star, exactly. the, stars the stars we're looking at could all be at the same altitude also. And there could be a, a flat dome over top of us that doesn't curve down. It only appears to curve down towards the edge because of our own perspective. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, that's... I'm not speaking about the firmament, but the dome, but the but the luminaries and what we are seeing above us could be, you know, could be because there that's what we're saying. Because come come all this in 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 the, these factors and also the the perspective factor, you know, and and uh, and the vanishing point and 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 the law of perspective and many different things also account in that. Yeah, convergence and could be. Yeah. Yeah, There's sure. no question. There's no question, guys. The atmospheric conditions, our perspective, our eyes are all in play. And then I think it was you, Keith, you just mentioned, brother. That's why it. another theory of mine, it, I am perceiving, sure, we're perceiving north, but we have to remember those stars are not, you know, going down a curve. They are flat and they are parallel to the earth, right? Right. So perhaps that is the reason why we perceive counterclockwise motion to do with the way, you know, the stars appear to us. Perspective and atmosphere. Absolutely. 
do you see what I'm saying about the stars? We have to consider that they are parallel to the ground and they're not up and down, right? Especially when we film or observe star trails, that's just all perspective based and the way our, our eyes are shaped, perhaps, right? I mean, I have to ask and, and the different speeds, you James, and 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 the different speeds you you were as you questioned before in the in the podcast that why is are some are different speeds because of because of the same thing it could be. Well, perhaps there's multiple layers to, to this. Yeah, yep, and and, and uh, yeah. Well, they all they all yeah. Go ahead, James. The same, they all appear the same size, right? At yeah. the max zoom on the Nikon, they all occupy this the same size. Like there's not any deviation, it doesn't seem. Sure there is with Jupiter and Saturn, but we're talking about the stars. When you're at the max zoom, yeah, it's yeah. like they all look the same size, right? So that means they are all at the same height. Am I right? I mean right. That, that and also in cool. some text, yeah, and some text is mentioned that they they are like in just a one layer of star. Like right. if we have the luminaries are are moving in different layers, so the star is only in one layer. So could be they could be have a constant height and different exactly. altitude according to the other luminaries or, or you know the wandering ones or so could that right. Yep. And, could be. and that's the only reason why they appear to drop is all due to perspective. As we know, the sun and moon do the same thing. So the stars follow suit. They appear to drop in the sky. When in actuality, they never do. They change, never change height. They always stay the same height. That's my theory. But, you know, I'm always working toward verification of that. I love you for that, brother. Thanks, man. And we don't have a spectrosity tester, do we? You know, something that will allow us to test light and how many light years. That's all nonsense. Thanks for, the, thanks for the compliment, Kev. You're doing great work, too, my brother. Thank you. Light Appreciate years. you. Millions of light years. It always cracks me up because as we can observe the star trails and watch the entire sky move over us and all the stars moving perfectly together if the heliocentric hypothesis were even remotely true don't you think one of the stars that's only 10 year 10 million light years away versus 100 light years away that they would be moving at different speeds i mean common sense would think that yeah, it would be but yeah. the fact that see everything moving in perfect unison every night night after night uh, tells you like rob yeah. everything is on the dome or on the uh the ceiling and uh, if the ceiling's flat or curved, I don't know. But the fact that there's no stars moving a little bit slower, or a little bit faster, but they're all moving perfectly the same speed, uh, tells me that we live in an intelligently designed enclosed system. <laughs> Very well said. These two word combinations, common sense is the main one. Intelligent design, that's another group. Jesus Christ is another one. Flat, flat Earth, right? Two word combinations. There you go. Two points make a line. <laughs> How many lines have you drawn for me, Rob? There was four right there. <laughs> isn't, it, isn't it cool, hey eh, guys, that who the creator made it so difficult to comprehend that that anonymity would allow him to remain humbly anonymous, right? Like, he doesn't want to give it away that he doesn't have an ego. He doesn't want credit yeah. for it. Right. right. He right. wants us. He wants us to become as intelligent as he is by learning for ourselves, because when we learn it ourselves, nobody can ever take it away from us. It's there. Once we go flat, we never go back. We get there ourselves by recognizing it ourselves. Free agency, James. Free agency. He left it yeah. to us. Yep. Agreed, man. And that's that simple, you know, naivety of perspective, which has allowed them to wrestle the control. And that's where we step in no more. The, that's the where we're coming in. The indoctrination was strong, though. And, and oh my gosh, to, it is. Yeah, well, <laughs> I feel lucky to be here with you guys also because the indoctrination was strong, guys. Yeah. Most, most people never realize that they can think and wake for them, wake up from themselves, let alone want to, right? They don't even know they can, that there's something else. They don't even know it. They, they're already awake, you know? Yeah, I, I have yeah. conversations with so many indoctrinated individuals every day. And, you know, they're real good at regurgitating their indoctrination. But when you exactly when you, you say something to them like, hey, our sun is not a star and stars are not suns, they lose their mind. I mean, they just can't even begin to think 
outside of the box just a little bit. The, the but, inverse uh, square law of light. Starlight is over right there, right? Am I that right? is. I exactly. See. Exactly. It's the over. inverse. I think it's just the shift of paradigm of belief, which is too much for some people. And that's why they just rather not investigate. But It's man, a lot. It's, yeah, like it's a lot. It is. Yeah. It's, it's, house, it's just a paradigm. The whole house of cards comes fall, come, often comes falling down for people because once one thing goes, you're like, oh my god. Then the rest right. of it's just a piece of cake at times. He's stuck here and there, but oh, yeah. it's important though, right? Because we know that the base of the pyramid is off, and we're speaking up to say, wait a minute, guys. Stop following these clowns. You know, turn off your <laughs> these, these clowns, the, right. these slave drivers, these peasant slave drivers. Literally, Who people voluntarily there? keeps themselves keep themselves in in as peasants, mental intellectual peasants. Yeah, that's what it they're, is. It's intellectual they're peasantry. Lying. They're lying Absolutely. about everything. Absolutely everything. 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 Enough. And, and 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 enough, James. Enough, right? You know, when you, as a matter of fact, I woke up to the fraud of government long before I woke up to flat earth. When Benghazi happened, that was it for me. I said, I've been in this embassy world, international world for too long. This is it. I'm not doing it anymore. I don't care what's on, what's going to happen after this. I'm done with it. Just, I'm just not doing it. And then it was, uh, three years later when somebody handed flat earth to me three years later. Incredible. eh? They're the most it's interesting very... people. Right. Very good testimony, oh. Rob. I love you for it. All of you guys, you're interesting because you figured and thanks, it out. Thanks, Kevin. As always. Same here. So that's that's why I like to get to know you guys, right? Because you figured it out. You've done the homework, and you're not buying into their bullshit. Man, you are great people. <laughs> yeah, yes, sir. And and by the way, everybody, I want to introduce Erica from Durango, Mexico. I met her a couple of days, and she knows. She came to the States knowing about Flat Earth from Mexico. So, ¿quieres decir hello, Erika? Diga hello. Hello, hola. ¿Qué son esta tierra? Hola. Plana. <laughs> there you go, la tierra es plana. Awesome. This, is, this is an authentic Mexican from Durango, Mexico. And she knows it. I think if the truth was known, there's millions of Flat Earthers in every country, way more than we can imagine. They are downplaying the numbers for certain. I agree. Right? But guess oh, who's yeah. winning? But guess who's winning? We will. And we are. Truth always prevails. Indeed. Nature shows that. And the key and the key is observable, observable, repeatable, and testable. That's the key. You don't need <laughs> anything else. Yep. It's exciting. Yep, speaking, uh, as we were speaking, yep. I, I just wanted to throw in for everybody out there to think about what they're trying to tell us, that we're moving in five different directions, right? And, 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 and we'll the, stop the, it. We'll if stop we add, the sun. The, the sun travels 500,000 miles an hour. We'll, and, and the orbit and the rotation and the galaxy and still moving from the Big Bang. We're moving so fast, trillions of miles a year and and the constellations have been the same since recorded history and, and still the, that, that water glass on your table doesn't yeah. move when you put it down the motion center <laughs> of, the, of the world exactly yeah. there you go right indicador the movimental so Gene, those, it sound yeah. like you were reading out of a fiction book <laughs> no, well I'm I'm thinking of what they're trying to tell us and how this this the, you know how the stars should be working and and it's just impossible to to be traveling through those different speeds through those different directions through all those years and still see the same picture you know what that's the equivalent of that's like driving all day for say say you drive for two days straight 48 hours and you drive for 12 hours of daylight and you see like let's say 50 things and you drive for 12 hours at nighttime and let's say you see 50 lights and then daytime comes around again, and you drive by the same 50 things you drove by the first day. And then nighttime comes around, and you drive by the same set of lights you did the first day again. And you just keep doing that over and over. So that's, yeah, that's we, impossible. 
it's a lot yeah it's a, it's a sci-fi fantasy as as you say as kevin say too you know like six, <laughs> like thousands 1600 kilometers per hour on right. its own axis you know 100,000 kilometers uh, around the sun around and then the milky way 850,000 you know and oh, yeah. and the galaxy 630 so it's all these numbers they are giving and you know and we have the polaris right there with all the uh, constructions and exist in this world where the the polaris can be seen through the sun to its equinox and to to right. its solstice all over the plane and at exact timing every year happening four times a, a year and and then so it's where is all this movement where is all these <laughs> fake numbers that they are giving and, and you know Polaris, by the hit, by by what science will tell you, Polaris is um, 433 light years away. So <laughs> there's your 33 for the for the Mason fans out there. It's so true, right? Oh yeah, and the swastika and the swastika, right? The yeah, the, yeah, the, big the, the four seasons, the, the wow. Big Dipper. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. The signs are there in in of the truth. What what is is a the swastika, we know that it's taken by the word I don't want to say, but it's the sign right. has been everywhere, and it's a, it's a universal nice. sign, and it just shows there. Yep, definitely. Uh, me and Rob call them adult boy scouts. <laughs> there you go, exactly. And you know, just so you know, everybody, when you see the Big Dipper, you look at the the the, the cup, and you have the handle, and then the cup, the last two stars of the cup. It's pretty much always right. point to the north. Yeah, it pretty much points North to the star. And the, big dip, and the Big Dipper through the year will surround that. And Correct. So it, so and it make fact, a circuit, makes a circle yeah. around it. Yeah. And the yeah. fact Sorry. that we can see that year-round in the north, uh, it just would be impossible on the globe delusion. Every six months, we would be looking at a completely different sky. Sure. Yeah, 180-degree sure. different sky. It's not just a little bit different, Keith, but a 180-degree degree different sky yeah. never observed never observed it has to happen that way but it's never observed there you go and, and not only that but earth earth uh excuse me the daytime would have become nighttime in six months that's right that's right the, the, because you do that do that with two oranges and draw daytime uh you know draw the sun and the earth and and go around in a, in a half a year and daytime should be nighttime by the way they're telling us Makes perfect yeah. sense like that. And that's how you know you spend how much money on a Rolex watch to keep perfect time, but they're off. If you guys ever try this experiment, when you're looking at these stars at night, hold your hand out at arm's length and stick your thumb out and your pinky finger out. Try to find as many stars as you can which fit into that exact measurement, and you will be surprised. Further exemplifying the fact yes. that perhaps the cosmos is unique to each individual viewer. I found several stars like that. For instance, the Big Dipper. There's two stars, the end one and the bottom ha bottom bowl are a finger thumb apart from me. And now rise up and put the middle star of the handle and the far one, it's the same. And what are the chances oh, of that, uh, right? That's cool. So that's like sacred geometry. Right. So it's all relative to the viewer, I feel, and also further evidence of no parallax, even though my rudimentary measurement tool of my finger and thumb at arm's length, it at least allows me to establish some foreground perspective. That's that's a cool yes. thing to learn. And I didn't that's, even know that. Bro, those stars are not changing position. They don't that's right. ever it, change it, position. If it were the model that they proposed, the heliocentric model, every star would be at a different different distance from the earth and it then that would cause that would immediately cause parallax and there is none never observed never Zero. never never and the, and the north pole too how would how is the orbit just happen to be locked into the north pole it's just it's insane that's crazy guys yeah exactly Gene, with why, all isn't those, there with, a, why isn't there a trajectory of the north star when all the other stars do have a trajectory Right. So whenever we're tilted on twenty three point right. four axis every what six months, but we can film two and a half hours 
of the stars going around the North Star players with trajectory, but the North Star never has trajectory. It's kind of a laughable subject yeah. to speak upon. It, it, the North Star, in other words, Kevin, the North Star just disproves the globe. There you go. It does. So wait, wait, yeah, wait, exactly. It's, it's got to be for navigation purposes, and that's there's reason for everything. But it's no it's, it's well, not to lose our north. It's the thing is we cannot ah. imagine we cannot imagine without the North Pole or the North Star. We cannot imagine anything happening on this plane because everything would be there. Wouldn't be a point. You know? There wouldn't be a mind, uh, a central connection to everything you know so it's, it's gonna be how this fantasy world of globe they would they're they imagining that exist that really don't nice. exist because of that perfection exists of that creation that is there in the middle as as i mentioned also in our last podcast losing our north if we lose our north you are not on the right path you are not and as you say gene uh, not only navigation many things we will lose in a way uh, without having that 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 watch, you know, that amazing creation that functions like a watch, that functions like a, 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 a entity in itself, you know, the whole ecosystem, how it moves and everything. It needs that, uh, uh, as we spoke about, also the all the animals and everything too. So everything is there for a reason for us to to be in line in a way, you know, because if no. That's the uh, globe. That's the heliocentric <laughs> model. Like. Yeah, right. right. By the way, I, I want to share with everybody, I have scripture I can show you that Abraham, describing the stars, Abraham says that the North Star is the highest of all, closest to the creator. Therefore, the, the North Star governs, I mean, is higher than all the other stars, are lower than it, on the, on the dome model. So there you go. That, there's scripture that, that confirms all that. It's right, and in the Vedic too. Uh, and uh, yeah, James, go ahead. Oh, sorry, Vika. Yeah, man, I just want to say on the topic of Polaris, it is an interesting star. Absolutely, it's actually a double star, right? It's a it's a larger star with a small apparent moon, which is very bright. And also, I've noticed it does move only very slightly, and it's I do tiny believe circle, it, right? Right, exactly. Yeah. The tightest circle of them all. And the only yeah. reason I know this is just from keeping my camera still, not on record. And I noticed I wasn't tracking it and it moved out of screen. I was like, well, he smokes. It's not supposed to be moving. But cool. in fact, it does move only yeah. slightly and it's a double star. So it's obviously I didn't very know it was unique. A double. Well, I know it made a tiny circle. That double, that's cool. Very cool. Yeah, always cool to look at. And if it, in fact, is the same height as the other stars, I don't know yet. It appears to be the same size, but I can't recall exactly, Genie. I will research uh, my, it's actually, I, it's on my YouTube page, Polaris. You will see it, but uh, yeah, it, interesting to study, no doubt, Polaris, right? It's the central point, apparently, that everything is moving around, so what is it? What is it? It's awesome. Yeah, I think the existence of Polaris, for me, and just keeping things so simple, is it, it, it's an absolute simple proof that we're not rotating, we're not revolving, we're not tilting, we're not wobbling. You know, we are perfectly <laughs> yep. motionless. We are sitting perfectly still, and everything in the sky is rotating over us. Exactly. Exactly. And 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 as what Ro as Rob was saying about the Abraham connection, you know, about about the North Star, and the same Abraham word can go to Brahma in the Vedic part, where it's supposed to be the house of the Brahma was supposed to be the creator, according to the Vedic text of this realm, you know, uh, or manifesting this realm. So, so we could go on any other different text about, uh, and it's all, it's there. It's like in a way coded for us to see that that's the truth. That's why I, I, we were mentioning about the swastika and, and how it was supposed to be a harmonic symbol and which represents the, 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 the divine of that point, you know, so. It for us to, yeah, the uh, the truth is there, and in its most basic form, if you could observe it, it's showing you the whole existence, what is happening right there, the whole shape of the earth, or how, what's happening, or what is <laughs> is right there, you know, in a symbol, and how exactly. things go exactly. around it. 
they've just uh, perverted everything that's real and true and observable, repeatable, and testable. Like, um, even the Star of Bethlehem, which nowadays is interpreted as the mass conjunction of um, Jupiter and Saturn, but they still use wise men to find it. Why were wise men seeking the stars to find one and only? Oh, that's interesting. So you're calling the astronomers the wise men, right? Because they're supposed to be the small guys? Yeah, well, they were <laughs> studying the stars and um, yeah. seeing the star of Bethlehem. And went that's and great. It. Jesus Christ himself. Here's another, here's another one. Isaiah 16, 29, it says, Your turning of things upside down shall be esteemed as the potter's clay. Well, heliocentrism is one big part of turning the creation, the understanding of the creation upside down. Heliocentrism is more or less the, the polar, the 180 degree opposite of the truth of the creation that we can observe. Exactly. Um, is. I have an eight-year-old daughter that says, the earth isn't round, people don't walk upside down. Listen to yeah, the in Australia, right? the highest one. It's crazy how we all bought it, right? Man, I only woke yeah. up in mid-2018. It's like four years of waking up. But, man, imagine we were awake all our life. It's amazing yeah. to think about. Consider, yeah. consider how they do it, James. They, yeah. they brainwash everybody at they the 7th and 8th grade level. In other words, they're brainwashing infants. We don't ever think to question it. We, and we go our whole life not ever thinking to question. It's so easy to, to realize it once we're adults. But we never think of it. Now I'm going to make a comparison to an elephant. And Vika, you, the, the mahouts. The mahouts will take a young elephant and they'll tie his foot to a stake. And so when, as he grows, he can't pull, that, can't pull his foot away from the stake. And therefore, as, as the large elephant doesn't know that he can pull his foot away from the stake with his newfound strength, right, as, a, as an adult elephant. Well, they do the same with us with our, quote, education. They teach us as infants, and we never question it. If we never question the, the earth we live upon or any other other indoctrination, we're no different than the adult elephant who still thinks like a baby elephant and doesn't remove himself from that stake in the ground. Very exactly. cool. Very well said. Oh, well, yeah. Add on that. Um, that's why they words, don't think rooms. like an elephant. <laughs> that's why they have living rooms that are all focused towards the television, and then people... Get oh programmed. yeah, but uh, they are program programming with a television telling their vision. There you go with a remote control. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they never have to leave the couch. Right, man. It makes me wonder, guys. They've they've indoctrinated us so badly that yeah. surely they must have had help from other realms like the levels by which you have to be that devious is just incomprehensible right like what the heck man it's it's almost like it's it pointing to the fact that it whatever is so great about the creator or this realm is like they're willing to do anything to stop yeah. us from figuring it out yeah, right? because and that's so the observation and, james we're so powerful and and you're right they will do anything and everything and they are that, demons and that is the observation james that the truth of the creation is so powerful they will they will give up infinite wealth and infinite power to to deceive away from the from the holy creator which is why it's so important to center ourselves on that holy creator right and the very oh, fact yeah. that we we just can't figure out you know how this has been happened to us right just goes to show you that the Slowly. help from help from other realms has perhaps indicative evidence that you know there's much more than just this three dimensions that we are living in and experiencing Right, and that's the intriguing thing about uncovering this mystery to me, like like the bigger picture, right? Other realms, and what's in play here. And that's that's like why I like to talk to you guys about this, and others, because I, I know you guys have thought about that too, right? Oh sure, yeah. Thank yeah. You, sir. What, it's like you know, yeah, the, 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 yeah, there could be possibility of of different dimensions and different realities, and you know, and. It's all also about frequency, but everything what we see, only see, only that exists. No, there are things that exist that we don't see. 
that could you know so in many different forms you know so for us just for the humans to to try to understand what we see and perceive and uh, understand the meaning of life and what we exist and pass this life it's a lot but to to know exactly or what is happening in more other dimension and if they exist or what different frequency or or different life or or, or different form of life or different form of or life or in different evolution you know all these things do exist too but it's everything has a time and frequency and not frequency, uh, yes. i yeah so mm. the majority is is just trying to survive <laughs> this uh, this haywire everyone is in you know so if there could be some person or people who are trying to understand the more meaning of life than just 9 to 5 and everything we know and everything we see and do and live our normal life than to get into what really exists or where do i come from what is this life or what is my mission or what is everybody's mission or what and start perceiving and seeing things that really don't exist for many other people because it's all about dial it's a radio knob dial whatever you want to call you you dial the different frequency you 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 try a different so yeah uh, Jay sent me a great analogy of this week. I, I, mean, I would like to tell you that that that, that sounded a, a cool. frog came out of a, a frog came out of the woods and, and, and looked down a well and saw another frog and said, "Hey, come on, hang out. There's a forest over here." And the frog in the well said, "No, nah, this is the world right here. You're crazy." Incredible. <laughs> Simple version of it, but it's you know people are happy where they are, and, and that's your frequency. You're in the well. You Stay in the well. It's okay. It's your frequency, though. It's people trying to tell you that there's other places out there. You can still do what you want. <laughs> Man. Well, for me, it's like uh, you make a shift away from the belief that everything is uh, a supposed particle or a wave and say, no, no, no. There is no particles. There are only waves of a frequency. Then, at a micro level, your entire reality changes. So, part of metaphysics involves, you know, you know, the, the uh, understanding that there are no particles and there are no quantified numbers. Nah, yeah, it's all the science mumbo jumbo, psycho bumbo. And that's why I kind of stay away from it. But I also want to say, you know, that shift in belief is the roots of how they've been able to establish this. Yeah, you know, the, the ability to, to, to have that also is, is, is a problem. You know, we, we, we were taught to believe these things that were flying out in outer space and we look at the same nighttime sky over and over to our whole life. It's never going to change. But we're moving and they're moving. And that's crazy. Agreed, man. Agreed. Yeah, the stars. The stars always, always, ha, always rang a bell for me. Like it was just so crazy. How, how are we moving like this? And that picture says it drifts across the sky and moves around a little. You know, like. But definitely. Oh yeah, and Genie, uh, uh, it's good that you brought it up. That also, we're speaking about the star. We don't. We have to remember the. The 1871 experiment by the Aries, Aries experiment. Aries Friday. Yeah, there was no the, rickets. Uh, yeah, and then yeah. there was a, in uh, Michelson Morley experiment too. Like they were, these two experiments really proved that the star was moving too, and not the Earth. You know. So. Right. I think we had some crazy feedback. I don't know. Did you guys experience that? I think we're okay, but I'm I'm gonna always mute when I'm not talking. I'll yeah. mute my mic just so you know. Yeah, everybody. Okay. Yeah, everybody should uh, mute when not speaking, so uh, we all can. The rest can listen clearly, and yeah, so the same thing. The the point care Lawrence. Einstein and other guys had to had to come up with something because of these two experiments because of the rotations and and the ether too. So right there is it's 
the it's this how they got started, right, guys? The manipulation of how we perceive light and how it's quantified. Yeah. And it's not particles, it's only waves. But you know, going not too deep into the science, initially that's how they were able to establish the bigger lie, which is the misunderstanding that, you know, things are particles and we came from a bang and stop paying attention to the stars and get busy so we can indoctrinate and abuse you well no way man no exactly. way and, yeah. and it's industrial slavery that's all it is industrial slavery yeah. industrial intellectual slavery and like we said at the beginning simple astronomy shows us the truth and i mean they, astronomy 101 if they're that's why they don't teach astronomy in the school because if they did, everybody would wake up and recognize the fraud all around us. <laughs> why, why you think I'm intrigued about the stars so much, brother? That's right. That shows everything. Okay. I feel. There you go, right? Yeah. It'll do the fighting for us, you know? The more we can demonstrate truth. Oh, yeah. Observations in nature. I agree, right? So there you go. Yeah. Enjoy my, enjoy my YouTube. I'm not going to stop. And I'm going to figure this out. And I'm going to allow people to understand that they've been lying. And we're going to figure out what the truth is. So there you go. You know, my, well, my problem right there is like if you don't, if if you, we're explaining this and it's right there that you can't move in all these directions and still have the same picture. I don't know how, where to go after that. Sometimes. There you go. There you go, Gene. It doesn't get any simpler than that. If they can't get uh -huh. that, then it's, it's, <laughs> uh, it's, you know, you know what the expression we say? It's like, Trying to explain a, pig, a a wristwatch to a pig, right? <laughs> <laughs> there you it's, go. it's time. <laughs> no, no, you know, so these conversations are great. This is where, yeah. you know, I carry stuff with me into the future and, and, and learn how to talk this stuff better. We get better every time, right? Yeah. Just by art articulating our feelings and our thoughts. And trust and me, without, without, without the arguments, you know, it's yeah, like exactly. You know, so, you got I get into a conversation with people and, and starts out with one person and then anybody who, who hears something jumps in, feels free that to just jump in and start chiming in and saying things. So it's very difficult. You know, I do better one on one, I think, rather than you know, talking to ten people or whatever, because everybody's got blah 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 blah. And it just gets so confusing so quickly. Forever divided in debate is how they win, right? So oh, yeah. avoid... Divide avoid, and conquer. Yeah, so avoid that. Bypass all of that debate. Focus on what's in front of you, which is this amazing cosmos. And I truly believe the intuitive solutions will arrive, right? They will. That's how they they're do. connecting with us through our consciousness. Yeah, you know, I was just thinking, maybe the stars bring information slowly across. Yes, and, you exactly. Know, if you're linked, maybe, you know, if, if you're vibrating at that right level and thinking about the right thing at the right time, that's when the stars line up and you catch that thought. Precisely. Consciousness yeah. downloads. Consciousness downloads, right? Barefoot. Yeah, right. Connected. Staring I, at the stars. Best therapy every, you can uh, do. every star is an angel. Yeah. Counts. Yeah, so that's why that's why that's why I was saying, you know, that these globe globe authors they say they are very scientific and they have their numbers and this <laughs> and they say like they're you know like the rotation and the clockwise and anti-clockwise. And I mentioned too that they don't take are into taking into consideration all the other aspects we spoke about, you know. So uh, like from being it simple from yeah, looking yeah. on the other side, from north to south. So they could they could be they could literally do this with any other thing even with you know when they're interested because they want to use the refraction they want to use the, the atmosphere but when they are not interested they don't want to use it you know because the same thing was happening with the with the the star trails and all the luminaries everything is ha happening in the same way as we spoke about also with the boat going over the horizon so it's it's playing part in all our everything we see around, you know, not only about the sky. And so, so the very picky science they try to do, you know, fake science. So take into consideration everything and then come up with the con conclusion, right? And one thing I want to say to that, Vika, 
I think the solutions arrive uniquely to each individual, right? Only reason I say that is because who's to say my reality trumps yours? And, you know, like, uh, if the consciousness is being affected by the cosmos, perhaps we can figure out a way to uh, affect our reality in a better way. And that way is unique. So when you stare at Polaris or when you stare at Jupiter, it produces a different reality for you. It's interesting to hypothesize about, right? Like your reality unfolds differently based upon perhaps which star you happened to look at last night. I don't know. Just thinking outside the box, right? We have to consider things like that. It's all on the oh yeah, and even 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 the climate, even the even the seasons, you know, being in a different part of different locations, you know, even the temperature can affect and everything. Yep, absolutely. It's, yeah, it it's alive, right? That's the bottom line. It's alive. So wow. <laughs> anyway, rant complete. <laughs> Hey, hey, a big shout out to Effie Nation for the super chat. Thanks, brother. Yeah. And the message is at... thanks to everyone in the uh, the message is from Flat Earth Nation. Thanks to everyone in the discussion. Flat Earth is taking off and keep up the great work. Oh yeah, Rob. Big shout out to you, Flat Nation. Carl Fletcher. And yeah, so yeah, the, we could could be here forever, but amazing as we we were right on the topic today, and really an awesome uh, insights from everybody. And we will be having our last thoughts about today's talk, and we'll be wrapping up, guys. So who wants to go ahead first? And Vika, if you don't mind, this is Rob. I'll go ahead and give my last two bits. The the stars, there they exist, and we we know we have our model. We know the spinning space water ball is is incorrect, so we know which model model to use. The stars, we know they're overhead. We can look at them. We have the we have the flat Earth model. The stars are overhead. There there it is. Whether they turn one direction or another, we know the Earth is not moving around the stars. We know the Earth is stationary. The stars are moving overhead above the Earth. Simple as that. Some stars move in different directions at different times. Oh, well, let's observe them. They probably move at the same time at the same, uh, at the same time of year, right? There's got to be a, there's always a pattern to it. They don't, they don't deceive us, in other words. That being said, understanding of the flat Earth leads us to the, the creator of the flat Earth, which is the, the most high, the creator of the flat Earth, Jesus Christ. I will say this, that we said it before, the most important two words of any language of all time are Jesus Christ. The most important words of science are flat earth, and along with that, with, along with flat earth, are common sense and intelligent design. And, and once we get to intelligent design, that describes the seeming clockwork, the clockwork of the Rakia dome overhead. So that's my last thoughts. Thanks again, Vika. Thanks for everybody else. Gene and James and Keith and Kevin. Nice talk with you guys today. Thanks, brother. Oh, yeah. You too. All the best. Well, it's a pleasure, bro. Honestly, bro, wants to go next? Mind me adding up on that. Yes. Very important subject. Always has been to me since I was introduced to it. But if you're going to go as deep as we do, finding out that we are created, you might as well find out who created it which is the way, the truth, and the life, Jesus Christ. Um, Vika, keep doing what you're doing. Um, you're influencing so many people. You're taking over the entire Flat Earth uh, community, and I love it. I love being your friend. Um, I love you being um, my boss and um, somebody I look up to. Um, Jeannie, thank you for always being there for me as well. Uh, Keith, uh, I'd like to get to know you a little bit better on a personal level. Rob Taylor, I talk to you all the time, so enough said there. <laughs> um, James, James, I love you as well, brother. Let's keep our observations up and destroy this globe. Thanks, buddy. Yeah, man. Awesome, Thank brother. You. We all are brothers here doing our part. And yes, uh, respect and for everybody. Yep. 
Thanks, Kevin, for being here, bro. Thanks, Kev. Who's going next? Do um, you want me to go, guys? Yeah. I just yes, might sir. as well. Yeah, man. Just a, an honor to be here. All this has happened pretty quick for me. I've never been in this many podcasts so quickly. Holy smokes, you know? I owe a lot of thanks to you, Kev, for introducing me to Vika and his show. You're a brave guy, Vika. Man, you're speaking up and you're doing a great job. I got to say... Uh, Rob, thank you for having me on your show, man. It's such an honor getting to know you. Man, you're a smart guy. Thanks for reaching out and asking me to be a guest. Jeannie, you're, you've are got some really cool insight. I know you do. you got that, that uh, laid-back style, and it just comes across as very cool and confident, and I'd like to get to know you more. Just the same way as Keith. Mm-hmm. Same with you, brother. You should be in maybe radio. you got a great voice, Keith. Yeah, both you guys are cool. And Kev, of course, man, thanks for helping me figure out the cosmos. I just really want to document nature, and I do so, and I will continue on my YouTube page. You guys can follow along as I learn, as I film and upload. You guys can comment and enjoy. Thanks for having me here, guys. I really appreciate it. Thanks. Thanks, James. Um, Always a pleasure. Yeah, our... We are gathering some amazing minds and some amazing inputs, and it's it's always most of the shows are so amazing, and we enjoy it too. And the idea is to yep uh, get great minds together, and yeah, uh, for the people also to know in the chat that the, we are open for anybody to come, and if you think you have things to say, you can come and join us. You know. Uh, be the topic we are discussing and you want to add something and yes and if you want to do that you can join our chat uh, private chat you can pm any one of us from here from the panel uh, or or our facebook groups and yeah it's for it's for everyone and that everybody wants to come here all are welcome to give their inputs and insights and the words they want to share and yep thanks james uh who's going thanks. next thanks for thanks vika yep. i'll go vika this is keith um i just want to say again as i say almost every day at least to somebody that the earth is an electrical topographical stationary plane and every same everything we see in the sky rotates over us uh if the heliocentric nonsense were true we would see different stars and we would we allegedly have traveled trillions of miles over the last thousand years and yet the stars are in exactly the same place tonight as they were on the same night last year what we see in the sky confirms the our intelligently designed enclosed system and i'm I'm glad to know about this now you know i just got introduced to this in 2017 five years later i know a little bit more but there's still so much more that i want to learn and will learn and it's good to be associated with all you guys and yeah, and same for me. I hope to get to know all you guys more on a personal level. Vicar, thank you. Oh yeah, absolutely, Keith. Keep keep your monologues coming, brother, and all the summary of everything <laughs> we try to discuss here. So great to have you. And yeah, all the monuments too speak about you know uh, that we don't move. Every every monument that existing around is is for a reason. And they are special places for a reason, you know, they're powerful places for a reason to, you know, apart from all the equinoxes and solstices. So thanks, Keith. And Gene, brother. My brother, this was a great topic. Had so much fun tonight. And uh, it, is, it is great being on a panel with you guys. A bunch of really interesting guys and they have such a great open mind. And, and information and understand how backwards the, the things were that we were taught and how to understand them in a, in a great way that's easy to understand for people. That's awesome to be here. And I, you know, I do, I love you all. And, and, and people in the chat too, like Vicky said, if, if you wanna, uh, any of our friends message us, you can message us and, and jump on the show with a question or two about the topic. We're, we're, we're discussing that now. It'd be great to see you guys in the chat. And uh, thank you for spending your time with us. And um, keep looking up. And, you, you know, I like to throw in how they like to make fun of us. And, you know, with, with something like the, the Walk of Fame, they got the stars 
and and the astronauts have stars on the walk of fame and we're walking on them and praising these people they, they like to turn things around and, and make fun of us and i think that was one way they do it and yeah i think a lot of us a lot of people were touching a lot getting in touch with a lot of people out there and they are tired of it it's a bunch of nonsense we got taught and there's way more beautiful things out there way more so when you wish upon a star is is possibly you know we all do have stars maybe if you get in touch with one of them it could be good for us they don't teach us everything and we know that so it's great to be here trying to figure it all out with you guys and um well said, well thank said. thanks have a great week everybody thanks genie oh yes yeah. thanks. Thanks. thanks thanks gene always a pleasure bro thank so you, yeah bro. people in the chat yes uh <laughs> star trails <laughs> we saw that if the globe global are saying that the stars are moving in different directions they are saying that they're that the earth is stationary so it's a perfect one for us there and yeah we see we saw that it's morely more about uh, the observer and and the direction it's looking but the the key is about the east to west west motion and and <laughs> yep it's if you keep the observer it's all about the perspective from where the observer is looking, you know, that atmosphere, is, that atmosphere is playing its own part in it, you know, and so, so the different speeds, the different angles, the different directions, so it all depends on each person and where we are, and the celestial dome could be a celestial plane that's moving about us, and that's why we are perceiving it as a dome, as we perceive because of our eyes, and Yep, people, there you have it, star trails, you know, dif different direction. It's because we are looking from a different angle, a different person or a different location. So there you have it, people. So I hope you guys join us for the next week. Definitely, we're going to have some awesome topic to destroy the globe again. Until then, see you, see you guys soon in another episode of Heliopsychosis Podcast. Bye, guys. Night, everybody. See ya. Night, everyone. Yeah. All right. We have a problem.